Record. You're listening to the FYI podcast where we talk about your life as a young adult and following Jesus at the center of it all. There's it's complicated. Adulting's hard. We've often said, but we want to have conversations and really answer your questions as it relates to your life, your purpose, your future, your calling, your identity, Mm -hmm. your faith, relationships, finances, adulting, all of it's on the table. And I'm Josiah Keneally. And I'm Micah Keneally, and we want to hopefully help you end your week strong and begin your weekend even stronger because every Friday we launch a new episode with a question that you are asking and hopefully direct you to the word of God and help you unpack some of those tangled questions and questions within questions. So thank you for subscribing, rating, reviewing, and letting us know what you're thinking and how you're doing and what are you asking? Because we just want to come alongside you. So Josiah, how are you doing? I'm great. It's summer. It's kind of the peak, the pinnacle, the midpoint of summer. And I'm mm-hmm. here for it. The warm weather, the bonfires, the smell of fresh cut grass, uh, doing yard work. I'm here for it all. Playing at the splash pad with our family. That's right. Going on boats. That's a form of adulting. If you're not doing that yet, you might someday. And yeah. watering weeds seems to be a theme in our yard, I feel like, right? Taming the weeds in our life and in our yards. The struggle is real. The struggle is real. <laughs> oh my gosh. We have an amazing question. And Josiah, I just wanted to, I just want to say this first, right out of the shoot. You are a I would view you as a dreamer and a doer. Mm. Uh, would you agree or disagree with that? Thanks for saying that. Yeah, completely. I'm passionate about both of those things. Yeah. To dream alone, I feel like is fantasy, but just to do things without purpose is monotonous. Yeah. And I think of the, it always comes to my mind, the analogy that I've used in the past, probably if you've tuned in, is like you're in a kayak and one paddle, one side of the paddle represents the dreaming. Mm -hmm. There's many dreamers in the world and then there's lots of doers in the world. So each side of the paddle represents one and the other. And if you're in the kayak and you're paddling and you're only dreaming, you're only, you're going to be going in circles. If you're only doing, you're kind of chasing the wind of life and not really dreaming, you're going the other way. But what if we could help you as a listener today, kind of understand the fact that you have the power, the ability, the desire, the dream, the drive, everything within you to be unleashed, to become a dreamer and a doer, because that is God, how God has designed us. He's designed us to work. He's designed us to think. He's designed us to do. And he's designed us to discover more. That's a lot of D's in this. Designed us to discover more of who and how he's created each right. and every single one of us. And here's what I want to say. There is only one of you and there will only ever be one of you. There's no room for two of you and there's no room for you to be somebody else. So just know that even if you are a dreamer and you're spinning in circles or you're a doer and you find yourself chasing the wind with no dream, no direction, and you're just kind of paddling through this thing called life, we can hopefully help point, guide, come alongside your little kayak of life today and just kind of maybe just give you a hope and a breath of fresh air when it comes to the season of life that you're in to cool down, to settle down, to know that you can become a dreamer and a doer and be successful in that process. And there are three things that we're just going to kind of unpack today because the question you are asking is, how do I dream again? Phenomenal question. So again means that you were dreaming at one point in your life and you might have stopped. Something might have happened. There may be a death, a trauma, sickness, ailments, um, end of relationships. So many things. Yeah. So yeah. Just, why don't you just go there for a second of just kicking off the question more or less, and then we can unpack those three things. Oh my gosh. I want to say it's time to dream again. That's good. Yeah. The time is now to dream again. And this is an episode and it really a conversation, a message of hope for the person who you feel like life has maybe kicked you in the teeth. And while you were down, kicked you in the gut again and and just kicked you while you were down. Maybe it, like Micah said off the top, it was a job loss. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was a point of pain, like a breakup or a relationship didn't go. Things haven't shaped out in life like you had hoped mm-hmm. or like you had thought. And, right. and you even wonder, is is there a point in dreaming again? And uh, you're asking the question, is this it? Maybe you're facing a job that mm-hmm. you, it's bringing you 
a paycheck, but not a purpose. And you're like, is this all surely to goodness and mercy, there's mm-hmm. more to life than this. And we just want to say there is, it's time to dream again. Mm-hmm. It's really time. And maybe, you know, somebody who life has just been um, challenging lately for them. This is an episode to share with somebody who needs that pick me up. Yeah, that's so good. So the first thing I'll just unpacking this question is number one, I would say is begin. So it's three B's begin and learn how to begin with the end in mind. So maybe you're 18 listening, you're 30 years old, you're 35, wherever you're at in life, start thinking that thought right now, where do I want to be at the end of my life? So let's begin this dreaming and doing thing that we're going to be talking about today in the kayak of life to go down the river, to propel towards purpose and to the heart of Christ and bring people there with us. Let's begin with the end in mind. And Josiah, we did this mm-hmm. when we began our marriage. Literally, yeah, we went to Hawaii on our honeymoon. And what did we do? Uh, kind of like hallelujah, hallelujah, <laughs> Honolulu. We were on uh, Waikiki Beach. It was amazing. We also visited Kanapali Beach. And it's incredible there. It was breathtaking, a lifelong dream for me. And I think for you, mm-hmm. for us to go to Hawaii and as best friends, newly married, we just pulled mm-hmm. out, I don't know, an iPad or a journal. I don't even remember. You had your computer. I, okay. We made brunch and we sat on the patio yeah. one morning for like four hours and, and dreamed. Drink. Yep. It was kind of answering the question when all is said and done with our lives, what do we want to be said and done? Yeah. Because I realized in the process, we are the author of our life, of mm-hmm. the story. Someday there's going to be a story told about our life and we're mm-hmm. ultimately the one writing it. And the banner over that is God's the author, the perfecter, the finisher of our faith, but he gives us the pen. And he's like, what story do you want to tell? So that's what we did. And we set goals financially. We set goals about spiritually. Yes. Spiritually, um, socially, um, relationally in almost every area of life from growth of physically, mentally, physically, socially, spiritually, all of them. Mm-hmm. I remember we started praying for one particular house that mm-hmm. it would go up for sale and we'd be able to buy it. And it's a miracle story for another day, but we're now podcasting in that home. Mm-hmm. Things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, we dreamed of a different job. We're launching a ministry. We mm-hmm. dreamed of a different um up in our vehicles. Vehicle. Yes. Your plan. And, and it's been amazing to see. We just celebrated this summer our sixth wedding anniversary. And I think that we're further faster than even we had asked, dreamed, thought of, mm-hmm. or imagined. Because that's the God that we serve. Yeah. But the idea that you're talking about is beginning with the end in mind and starting somewhere. Mm-hmm. Start with the dream. Yeah. That's number one. Well, and I would even say with that, so Josiah even began our honeymoon before we had even That's met. Right. And That's here's right. here's what I just want to say. He was a man who was beginning with the end in mind because he knew at some point he wanted to be married, yep. but he had a card that allowed him fly miles that allowed all these different yep. things. And the perks of it were like, we literally went on our honeymoon spending less than what? $50 for two plane tickets. dollars yeah. 20 bucks for two plane tickets yep. for 10 days in Hawaii because yep. he began opening up this credit card before he was 20 years old mm-hmm. and thinking about the future. So paid it off every month. Yes. So Dave even Ramsey, that, don't hate me. <laughs> he never missed a payment and he always paid off in full. But I mean, just even that alone, being a single yeah. young adult male thinking about his future, which was what? five, six, mm-hmm. seven years later, yep. a form of beginning with the end in mind at a very young age. So taking that into consideration. Here's what it looked like for somebody that I grew up watching play basketball for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Kevin Garnett had this dream of not only getting to the NBA right out of high school. It's an epic story. He won the MVP but his career wasn't shaking out. He was dreaming of the ring, the championship, mm-hmm. the team title. He had a lot of individual accomplishments, but he wanted to win a championship. And then he ended up leaving the Timberwolves. Sad day. But he went mm-hmm. to go play for the Boston Celtics and he won it. And he had been fighting over a decade to wow. win this. And then he gets the ring and I'm watching it on TV and he holds up the title like this microphone. And he's like anything is possible. Like that was his message. Wow. And I remember that. And how true, 
how emotional that anything is possible. We serve a yeah. God who yeah. nothing is impossible with God. Well, I think even for the athlete, why do we why do we play sports? We want to go to, to win. the Super Bowl. Yes. We want to go to the World Series. We want to get the ring. We want to get the trophy. Like, and with that mindset, like we should want our heavenly treasures stored up like we do on earth, quote unquote. So good. But something that will last forever is our eternity with Jesus and in the supernatural that we get experience now. But so beginning with the end of mind is number one. Number two, I would say is become. So good. Become who God has created you to be. Yeah. So Josiah, do you have anything to say about that? Like how have you discovered your gifts, your talents, your skill sets, your mm. um the mentors that have spoken to your life, the quiz that you've taken to understand more of who you are and, and maybe you want to be speaking more of who we are as a married couple because yeah. you've I've we've taken personality tests. Yeah. And yeah, it helps us to understand each other, but we're still becoming more like Christ, hopefully, each and every single day, right? Yeah, becoming like Jesus is the goal. Yeah. Becoming more like him. It's called sanctification, is the theological term for becoming all that God's made you to be. Mm -hmm. And I just look at my life like I am all in with Jesus, all in with faith. Yeah. And along the process, somewhere along the way, I realized that faith wasn't just one hour a week on Sundays. My journey of faith was yeah. like, oh, there's Wednesday nights too. Mm -hmm. And then it was two days out of the week and it was youth group, but then it was like, oh, there's small groups. And then, so it was three. And then it was like, oh, reading my Bible every day and praying every day. Yeah. And slowly it kind of eclipsed where it's not just a single day of the week or an hour mm -hmm. it's like no no no. this is the majority and now no this is the full yeah. full-fledged all in I have I die daily and it's no longer I that live but Christ in me and I just think that I remember finding out oh mm -hmm. going to church and the service is at 11 but there's Sunday school at 9 30 I was like in second grade said to my family we should go to Sunday school so we went into Sunday school and church I remember then finding out there's Wednesday night programming, like kids and youth and families. And then there's small groups. And so, but, oh, they're doing a, a weekend camp out or they're doing a yeah. youth conference or they're doing camp. You're doing youth convention. And slowly it's just becoming really by lingering longer. Ooh, that's good. And I think that the message today is to dream again. You've got to lengthen the linger. You've got to spend more time in awe of the majesty and the power, mm -hmm. the, the miraculous, the majestic, the mystical. There's more of God than you're mm -hmm. tapping into, than I'm tapping into. Even right now in this moment, I haven't arrived yet. We're still on a journey. Yeah. But along the, along the process, and it's not just checking boxes or attending events, I think those things help us become, mm -hmm. but it's praying, God, my life mm -hmm. is in your hands. Mm -hmm. Take me. I'm the clay. You're the potter. So mold me, make me, shape me. And it's praying the scriptures. Yeah. It's praying the questions. It's worshiping a God who is amazing. He created the heavens and the earth. Worthy is his name. Yeah. He's holy. He's mighty. And I just want to become all that he's made me to be. Yeah. So when we are in the process of becoming, we're essentially sifting through the things we need to add to our life and the things that we need to remove from our life. And that can be from our calendar to our eating regimens, to yeah. our social groups, yeah. to our social clubs, to our interactions, to our commitments, to all yeah. those different things. Essentially, it's sifting through the yeses and the nos of becoming. So it's adding and removing elements of like just literally what you just said. And I think yep. those are huge contributing yep. components of, well, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Yep. Who you're around, your five closest friends, those become your spending habits. Whether yes. you have money or don't, yeah. those are the mindsets that we get stuck in, into. Those are the ruts. Those are the, the habits that we acquire and develop over time, potentially without us even knowing and I recognizing. Know. I know. So when you're in the presence of God and you're connected to a local church and you're in community and you're exactly. doing life with people, there is a heaven-minded urgency that begins to 
become part of your DNA of why do I do what I do when I'm dreaming and when I'm doing, God, is this dream of you and from you, or am I just doing things to please you? So it's even sifting through how do I dream again is God awaken that. Wow. Awaken yes. that off factor. Yes. Like Josiah said, awaken that holy cow, like, God, I don't have to pray to you. I get to pray to you. Show me who you are, God. And I think when you start praying that and you start becoming more like Christ, you become more sensitive. You become more in tune with the spirit. You become more aware of your own shortcomings and who you are and the ugliness in you and how much you need Jesus more than you ever thought you did. And you say that humbly, but wow, it's like, how? could he offer that much grace to somebody like me? Like you really start, start to unpack that. So when you start dreaming, inviting God literally into your daily life of your dreaming and doing throughout the day will help you propel towards and become more like him. And he will awaken elements of who and how he's created you, whatever, in whatever season you're in. You got Jumping something? in real quick. Ooh, I yeah. remember this conference I attended first time I ever heard um, Pastor Louis Giglio speak. And I was late teenager, early 20 something, trying to figure out my next step in life. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of that trying to dream again thing. Mm -hmm. It's time to dream again. It's like today. years of seeing a little oil in. <laughs> yep. And I remember his message. He talked about climbing Mount Zermatterhorn, the Matterhorn mm -hmm. in uh, Switzerland. And huge mountain, and he got up early, and he had the guide and everything. And his message was three points. And a lot of people are like, "Oh, I don't ever remember a message." I remember this message. He goes, "Life is short." That was his whole first point: is how short life is. Mm -hmm. Second point was how big God is. Life is short. God is big. Third is what do we do? Life is short. God is big. Take the next step. Mm. It was such a transformational message and it applies to today. Time to dream again. Just take the next step. You don't have to summit the mountain tonight or tomorrow or next week. Just but if take you're the next sitting step. on the couch and don't exactly. even have your gear ready, then we're in yep. trouble. Exactly. And I think we've all been guilty of that, yep. to be honest with you. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So we have number one is begin, begin with the end in mind. Number two is become, become who God has created you to be. And then number three, I think is believe. And with believing, I think believing is different than thinking, right? Yeah. Is it like, oh, I yeah. think God's a good God. No, I believe God is a good God. I believe the plans he has for me. So in Je in Jeremiah 29, 11, we read that. Just you want to pull that up and just yeah. read it for me. Yeah, yeah. So in Jeremiah 29, 11, we get stuck there. And then, oh, I know what plans I have for you. They are good. Da, 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 da. But then we forget to read to 13. Yep. So Josiah is going to read Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13, if you yeah. could. We've probably, part of this is going to sound familiar. It's the letter to the exiles written by Jeremiah the prophet. He says, this is a message from God. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. It's up right there. That's generally where we stop. Why? Because it's kind of like, it sounds like it has been represented as this blanket statement because I believe in God, he has amazing plans for me, but I don't have to do anything. I, it just mm -hmm. stops there. We forget to read on. And here's why I want you to read on because thinking and believing and where the faith factor comes into play is in this next little verse. Verse 12, then you will call on me. And come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart and I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Come on. Okay, so there's the dream factor. We can say, God, I think and I believe that you could have good things for me. I believe it. I believe it. I think it. I think it. But if we're not seeking God with our whole heart, we're not going to understand who we are and whose we are. We're not going to be able to dream. So how can we begin? Yep. So it's like almost like this. Yep. Writing a book backwards kind of type That's thing. When I say believe, believe, um, become and begin. It's like we believe, we become, we begin. But I said it in the other way. Like we need to be begin with the end of mind. We need to become more like Christ, but we need to believe. So when we read that verse, I always want you as a listener, and I've just been like, why does everybody stop there? Like we need to keep reading. If you seek me with your whole heart, then you will find me. You Then you will understand. Mm -hmm. So I think we stop dreaming because we don't do the then. Right? Yep. Would you agree or disagree? Have you ever been there? Spot on. Spot on. I remember God gave me a vision in 2012. 
it got me moving in the direction of young adult ministry. And in the process, I've had a few jobs. One of the jobs I remember, I shared a dream about the future. I shared, put, I, I was vulnerable. I, I shared transparently of ideas, hopes, dreams, and um, leadership in that role told me no. Mm. And I felt so small. I felt so insignificant. I felt so misunderstood and I felt rejected, bottom line. Mm. And I picked up this book. It happened to be by America's career coach, Ken Coleman, who's become a friend of yes. ours. And in that process, he just said this. One whole chapter of the book was turn rejection into redirection. And he shares his story of like, now he has a radio show, mm -hmm. but there was people who wouldn't even give him studio time. There was people who told him, you'll never make it in a market like Atlanta or Nashville. You just don't have what it takes. And he, he said this to us on our other podcast when we interviewed him about this. He said, turn rejection into redirection because no doesn't mean no. No just means not here. Yeah. No just means not now. So you just need to find a new expression, reinvent yourself. And I think of even uh, a different dream. I felt really hurt and let down by, I had talked to an acquisitions editor and I had talked to an agent about a book project I wanted to write. Mm -hmm. And in the process, it was like a year and a half to hear maybe from five publishers. And then they all actually weren't interested. Mm -hmm. And I don't share that story a lot, but what I ended up doing is asking myself this question, do I believe God wants me to write this book? Yes. Okay. Then I'm going to write it. And there's an option called self-publishing that shout out to Amazon. Mm -hmm. I was able to get the message out. If I dream it, I do it. <laughs> exactly. And so where there's a will, truly there's a way. Yeah. And my somebody who's a stubborn personality like mine determined it's a gift. It could also be, I've got to be surrendered to the spirit of Christ to go, is this me or is this God? Mm -hmm. Is this God or is this me? And I've got to be willing to put that on the altar and say yes or say no. But along the journey to the person who's discouraged, I believe this, we see in the story of Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. Nehemiah is the cupbearer to the king. There's a whole book called Nehemiah written in the Old Testament, one of my favorite stories. He's basically royalty, serving in the king's palace, happy-go-lucky guy. One day he shows up on the job upset, and the king had never seen that before. And he goes, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. Well, I found out, he says, that my people, the people of God in Israel and Jerusalem, the wall is torn down. I'm burdened. The message today is that burdened is the place of birth for dreams. Mm -hmm. If you look at Shark Tank for a second, all great innovation comes from solving a problem. Business classic example, there's a great case for the use of toilet paper. It cleans up messes. <laughs> and if you can find ideas, solutions to problems, that's going to be, if you're burdened about something, it usually means you're called to take action right. about it. It can be a burden, can be the birthplace of new vision that's and good. new dreams and new hopes. So if you're, don't be downcast, don't be let down, ask God, what's my next step for this burden? I remember uh, in my life, a mentor had just said to me, we talked last week on the podcast about mentors. Something was unlocked when I was asked the question in the next three years, what needs to happen in your life for you to be satisfied? And I wrote everything <laughs> down. This I want to change. I want to pursue that degree or this or that. And I made a whole list about a future wife. Mm -hmm. And God answered those prayers because of a question. So really mm -hmm. the assignment for the listener today, for the viewer on mm -hmm. YouTube, wherever you're streaming this podcast, um, what's something or what are the things in your life that need to change mm -hmm. in the next few years for you to be happy with God, with yourself, with life? Mm -hmm. And then what's your next step? Because look, it's time to dream again. Yeah. And I would say with dreaming and doing, I just think of those lyrics in that song. It's like, God, when are you going to do something? And the response in the lyrics were, I, I did, I sent them you. And you might be the answer to somebody else's prayer. You might be the answer to some huge innovative thing. You might be 
a gateway for somebody else. I don't know what God has for you, um, but you need to seek him and you need to find him because he will reveal it in Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. So if you feel like that's you and you feel like your dream has become a burden, a burden generally keeps you up at night. A burden can make you agitated or um, maybe a little spiritually angry or distraught of like, why doesn't anybody care about this? That generally, like Josiah said, means that something's stirring in your heart. Just find the ability to help tame that dream, but actively seek out prayer, seek so. out discovering and becoming, seek out and believing that God is going to do something. But in that process, you have to be the dreamer and the doer to propel down the waters. And sometimes those waters get a little rough. They might be whitewater rapids and you may come up against opposition and it might be a little messy in the process, or you might hear no five times from a book publisher, but who knows what's down for Josiah. Maybe down the road, there's going to be a whole book signing of a series of three. We don't know. We're praying. We're believing. We're saying, God, here we are. Just use us. We're ordinary people wanting to do extraordinary things for your kingdom and in your namesake, not our own. So if you're a listener and you're really wrestling with the dreaming factor, maybe just get out a pen and paper like Josiah did and write down some dreams, some aspirations, some things that get you agitated. It's not, it's not that hard. It's not that expensive. Um, and you can have fun in the process. So if you're married, get together with your spouse and start dreaming about your future. If you're single and you want to do this with some of your roommates or dorm mates, or if they'd find any interest in that, start dreaming, doing, setting goals. Um, and not in your namesake, but in God's, in God's name for his kingdom and his kingdom alone. With all my heart, I believe this, that the best is yet to come in your life. We're believing for you encouraging you That's along good. the journey. This is the FYI podcast.